Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael J. Long. It's uh, June the 28th of 2012 at 10.28 a.m. Now, um, and again, this is Michael J. Long and um, with some breaking news here. The, um, the, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the mandate. Well, what they, the individual mandate, which I kind of wasn't expecting, but, you know, here's the deal with that. That's to say that, look, they also, what they also ruled on and they said was, okay, the exchanges, the states no longer are required to do it. They struck that part down on the Medicaid expansion part. And they said, you cannot deny funds to the states if they don't want to participate in the, um, in the, uh, in the, um, what do you call it? The, um, the, uh, the exchange. You still have to give them fundings if they request it or whatever. And so it was a partial victory, a partial defeat. And but nonetheless, it's a huge victory for Obama, at least partially. It's going to have serious political ramifications going forward. And I think that regardless of whether Mitt Romney or Ron Paul wins the Republican nomination, whoever is going to be the Republican nominee from that arise that emerges from this political convention that the Republican Party is going to have in Tampa on August the 27th, you can rest assured whether it be Ron Paul or Mitt Romney that they're going to most certainly be backed and foreign policy is going to be out of the line. It's going to be strictly on Medicaid, Medicare and ships. Oh, well, on, on the health care thing anyways. And they're going to focus on Getting rid of the um, the the Affordable Health Care Act, but an agenda shouldn't be just based on just that. Okay, and I'll tell you what I'll do if I'm president. I would not only get rid of the Affordable Health Care Act. I'd get rid of I'd get rid of um, all the federal government agencies, with the exception of Medicaid, Medicare, ships. Social Security, ICE, Cu ICE, Customs, and Border Patrol. And I would retain ICE, Customs, and Border Patrol and use it as an immigration tax for immigration enforcement. And then I'd use Medicaid, Medicare, CHIPS, and Social Security and use that as a medical tax. Eventually, what I'd like to do, if I ever run for office one day, is to eventually localize Medicaid, Medicare, CHIPS, Social Security, ICE, ICE Customs, and Border Patrol. Uh, well, Medicaid, Medicare, CHIPS, Social Security, and and just retain the immigration, the, the ICE Customs and Border Patrol. So then, and then maybe with Congress's permission, we could set up exchanges with the, through the federal government to provide services with, for people with autism and so forth. And I think that we need to make cuts on, we need to get out of the affairs of foreign countries and only go to war when needed. On defense purposes, when declared by Congress, we need to make massive cuts on defense. And, I mean, at least on foreign on our foreign policy and get our troops home. We need to make cuts on Medicaid, Medicare, chips, and Social Security and other welfare. We need to get rid of the food stamps. We need to get rid of the WIC program. We need to reform the Civil Rights Act. Get rid of the Affordable Health Care Act. The and National Defense Authorization Act, the Patriot Act, we need to, and ultimately, and it, we need to, you know, ultimately consider getting rid of the CIA, the FBI, you know, we need to get rid of, we need to privatize the VA and try to, you know, reduce the size and scope of the federal government. So apart from that, every other federal government agency, including the EPA, we should consider getting rid of all together, just totally eliminated, and, and, um, but an agenda like that is not going to get passed with just, you know, the House, and, you know, with just a president, keep in mind, though, that the executive orders are unconstitutional and not permitted under the Constitution, so we need to focus on reforming the Republican Party and the Democratic Party 
and getting true liberty minded conservatives and or libertarians to run under those parties and if they lose in the party primaries to the establishment then we need to get political third party candidates and run as many liberty minded people and true conservatives and libertarians under the constitution party the libertarian party the reform party the independent party and get and and, and try to get them into the house and senate and dominate we need to get, and, and ultimately we need to get real meaningful people in that will favor such an agenda, or at least most of it. And we need to get, if, if Mitt Romney get, wins the nomination, we need to consider getting either Gary Johnson or Virgil Hood, the Constitution Party's candidate in, or the Libertarian Party's candidate, that being Lib Libertarian Party's candidate Gary Johnson. We need it, or, or Virgil Hood, if you're not comfortable with Gary Johnson, um, who's running under the Constitution Party. We should get. We should be serious about this. We shouldn't just base our political issues on just, you know, the Affordable Health Care Act. But we should be from abroad. And so I'd say that we need to. I know that Reagan said that it was not a third party we needed, but a rather a revitalized second party. Other people argue that we need political part third parties. But ultimately, we need to reform this country and not focus on, okay, vote Republican or vote Democrat or, or vote third party. We need to think about what's right for this country, okay? And even if the vote is split between a third party and the two major ones, and the, that doesn't guarantee that a Democrat or a Republican gets in, it, and especially if the Electoral College is allowed to vote their conscience. And I think Gary Johnson has the, even if you don't agree with him on all the issues, and I don't agree with him on everything, I don't, but I agree with him on some issues, but I don't agree with him on his abortion or gay marriage issues. And I think that gay marriage, between gay marriage, marriage equality, and or straight marriage, I think that this, the federal government ought to be out of that. I think if we're going to have any government involvement, it should be at the state level. But ultimately, it should be left to the churches to decide that. Um, and, so, and I don't even think it's proper for the states to impose any particular such a policy for it. Um, whether it be marriage equality, same-sex marriage, or whether it be marriage being between a man and a woman. Because I think the government should be out of it. And I think that people ought to decide for themselves who they're going to marry and stuff. And so I think that having marriage equality legislations being done through Gary Johnson or anybody else would be totally not worth it. But what I, and there was never really any law banning gay marriage, so I don't know why marriage equality would even be front and center. This is a church and or state's right issue. Um, I would argue that, um, that we need to think about what's best for this country. You know, you have the, we, and true conservatives on the average, yes, we're against illegal immigration. Yes, we're in favor of gun rights. We're pro-life. We're against abortions. On and on, yada, yada. We're also, we're also supposed to be against, if we're going to be conservatives, against central banking, against the foreign policy that we have. We should be for property rights, for the property rights. We should be for states' rights. We should focus on what the Fed, and we should have a debate on this in terms of what the federal government can do and what it can't. And I think we should be for property rights and we should be against property taxes and, and so forth. And, and this, is the, the, this is really the true aspects to a true conservative. To a true conservative who is truly identical to libertarianism, and, and, and true conservatism on the average should be considered, should be against um, prostitution, but should ultimately also be in favor of the legalization of drugs, but also be against the cartels and stuff. And for someone who is a neocon, they might perceive that as, well, it's a mixed message. No, it's not. If you're going to be conservative, you got to follow what true conservatism is. You got to follow the rules. You cannot make it up as you go and say, okay, well, you know what? I'm a conservative, but let's have central banking and foreign policy. Because you're that bad, because at that point, you're not following the rules. And if you're not following the rules, you cannot be considered by real people like me to be a conservative. You might call yourself a conservative, but you're really more of a neocon, if neocon, if you or neoconservative, if anything, if you favor central banking or the foreign policy that we have. Um, so there's no, there's no doubt 
that, you know, you know, over time, we could see Congress removing, you know, the Affordable Health Care Act and, and stuff like that. But we need to think from abroad. Because sooner or later, this Affordable Health Care Act is going to go down the drains. Sooner or later. It's going to be reopened by the Supreme Court and struck down. And I know that they ruled in favor of the mandate. But eventually, new legal challenges will bring it back over to the Supreme Court. If not, Congress will probably eventually remove it. But, you know, we need to, you know, focus on getting people in that are not only going to be against the um, Affordable Health Care Act, but also going to be against the Patriot Act. They're also going to be in favor of our civil liberties and our rights. And this is a big part of what conservatism is about, you know. And, and so, you know, you need what I'm saying here is America needs to be thinking from abroad because they're putting fluoride in our water. They have QE3, QE4 going on. They're really trying to set up a one world government. That was the intention behind a lot of what the Supreme Court and the federal government has done with Woe versus Wade and the health care ruling. What I like about what the Supreme Court did was they upheld the immigration law Arizona had. It was pretty good. But, you know, we need to think from abroad, and we need to think seriously on the restructuring of our government, at least on the federal level. We also need to get local, state, county, elected officials in. They're going to, you know, stand up to the federal government if we can't get people in the federal government that are going to do what we want. So, you know, if, you know, and this is not going to happen overnight. There's no guarantees whether Gary Johnson's going to get in. You know, but we got to continue to fight even if they succeed in establishing a one world government. We need to continue to fight these people to to nail and we should never ever consider surrendering. Never should we ever consider surrender on the tables. Um so I'm Michael J Long, Michael John Long if you will. Michael Long, you can call me Mike. Michael, doesn't matter. And um, thank you for joining me. I, I truly do appreciate it.